What's up, everybody? It's Paul Gallant from 710 ESPN Seattle's Danny and Gallant, which you can hear every single morning from 7 to 10. Guys, we're going to be watching Super Bowl 54 with no Seattle Seahawks in it. Even worse, there are three things that we could watch during the game that are really going to frustrate the heck out of us. Number three, we all look at Jimmy Garoppolo as a handsome Aladdin-esque figure. I can show you the world. He did not show us the world in his first game back from a torn ACL this year. He was one for six in his first preseason action. I know a preseason game for zero yards, one interception could have been two. But since then, he has turned things around. This is a guy that helped the San Francisco 49ers rally from a 20 to 7 deficit against the New Orleans Saints in the Superdome, which is a really difficult thing to do. Helped them get home field advantage in the playoffs. And he's a guy who actually had the third highest yards per attempt number in the National Football League ahead of that of Patrick Mahomes. This is a guy that deserves some respect still at the same time. When a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo, a quarterback for a Super Bowl winning team, is being asked 50% of his questions around the Super Bowl about his former teammate Tom Brady, number one. And number two, we're looking at a guy that really just did not look that impressive when he played against the Seattle Seahawks. How much respect do you give a guy like that? Well, here's the thing that's going to happen if the San Francisco 49ers win Super Bowl 54. You're going to have to respect him, and that's going to be a guy that's going to be moving into next season with a whole lot of confidence. Number two. Richard Sherman getting a trophy and being able to put it in your face. Look, I hope Richard Sherman the best. I hope that he does well in his future ventures, but I think we're all in agreement that it's going to be really difficult to see him holding up a Lombardi trophy while wearing 49er scarlet or whatever color red they are and gold as opposed to wearing blue and green like he should be. It's hard to watch. I'm not going to lie, though. I'll enjoy it a little bit until... Well, he'll probably thank the Seattle Seahawks for casting him adrift and saying, hey, you know, go and try out free agency. Okay, I will. I'm going to sign with your division rival, and then I'm going to help lead them to a Super Bowl. And I could totally see him coming back to Seattle, where he still lives, throwing a Joker-esque from Batman in 1989 parade, and in doing so, uh, just making us all sit there, sadly, wondering what could have been with our ex jilted lover. Number one, though, this is the thing that you should be most concerned about. The Frank Clark experience. If Frank Clark wins the Super Bowl, you are going to hear a whole lot of Frank Clark, referring to himself as Frank Clark, because Frank Clark likes to say the word Frank Clark more than any word in the English language. It's not even a word. It's a couple of words. It's two names to be specific, but this guy loves speaking about himself in the third person. We saw the advent of Frank Clark feeling himself after four sacks in the playoffs. We saw it leading up to the AFC Championship game when he said Derrick Henry isn't that hard to tackle. I said to myself, okay, bro, <laughs> that guy's 800 pounds. Guess what? Frank Clark and the Chiefs stopped Derrick Henry. After the game, Frank Clark lost his mind, went on a crazy rant, and since then, we have seen Frank Clark continue to talk about himself in the third person and call out the guy that he replaced in Kansas City, D. Ford, for for being a dummy last year during the AFC Championship game for Kansas City against the New England Patriots with that offsides that cost them a game-winning interception against Tom Brady. So you add all of that up, and if the Frank Clark, the Frank Clark, we're going to call him that, wins a Super Bowl, you are going to see a long, long reality TV show-esque summer featuring a half-wrestling heel, half-improved version of trash-talking Richard Sherman in your television and in your life every single day. And by the way, he was on the Seahawks last season. So those are the three things that I am dreading most, covering the Seahawks, following the Seahawks, rooting for the Seahawks in Sunday Super Bowl 54.